So maybe um, I'd like to just ask you all to uh, maybe uh, if, if you like have your eyes open or closed, but just I'd like you to recollect, recollect a time where you um, received a gift or a present or assistance from somebody. Um, it could be like a birthday or a you know Christmas, New Year. Um, a surprise event, or it could have been just simply, <clears throat> you know, the welcome that you received, maybe the first time you were on a job, maybe a colleague is showing you around, or uh, the first time you go to uni or something like that, and maybe somebody's showing you around, helping you out, somebody holds the door open for you, somebody let you in in traffic. Just remember some occasion where, uh, you know, somebody gave you a fair go, somebody gave you uh, a little help in life, um, it could have been any time, it could have been today, like I said, just driving here and somebody let you in in traffic. Um, somebody helped you with a parking spot. You know, somebody uh, was smiled to you on the footpath walking here, opened the door, helped you in some way. Can you remember some situation today, yesterday, this week, this month, this year, this lifetime where you know, you received a little assistance in life. Could be a family member, could be a friend, it could be just somebody totally anonymous. And, you know, in our heart we can often just say thank you to this person. Thank you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your help. I'm very grateful for, for your assistance, for your kindness, for your time, for your knowledge for this gift, how kind of you, how thoughtful, how sweet. Thanks so much. I feel really grateful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you for giving this to me. I'd like to just really focus on that sign, that sign of receiving something. Could be uh, an action in body or a speech or just in mind where you know that somebody has goodwill for you. And you're grateful. I feel grateful for this, to be a recipient of this generosity on behalf of somebody else. Thank you so much. Thank you. And similarly, maybe I can just feel grateful to the opportunity that I have had today, yesterday, this week, this month, this year, this lifetime. For where I've had the opportunity to share my wealth, my abundance with others. I can imagine that I'm just sharing, helping, caring for somebody else. Just recalling to mind as real and as concrete an experience as I possibly can. The sight, sound, smell, taste, touch of this experience of where I am generous and I am sharing and I am giving too. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to share my wealth, my prosperity, my knowledge, my abundance, my flourishing with others. It could have been just a smile, a greeting, I held a door open, I let somebody in in traffic. I reciprocated the kindness that I received from others and, you know, what went around came around. And I feel good about what I can give and share. Thank you so much. Thank you for receiving this from me. I'm so happy to share this with you. And I feel appreciated. I feel that what I have to share and give is valued. And I acknowledge this in my heart. Similarly, I can just take this feeling that I have towards myself and others and just have it for my head. I'm thankful to my head. I'm thankful to the eyes, the ears, the smells, the tastes, even the touch that I experience in my head. The gifts of sight, of sound, of smell, of taste, they all exist in my head as well as touch. I'm thankful to the back of my head, the top of my head, the left side, the right side, my forehead, my eyes, my nose, my mouth. Thank you so much to my head. 
and thank you to my neck, the voice box for the support it gives my head. Thank you so much to my neck. I'm thankful to my shoulders, my left and right shoulders. And maybe just as if I was carrying heavy shopping and I put down the weight of the bags, my left hand, my right hand, I let go of that weight and I let that tension out of my shoulders. Thank you so much to my shoulders for carrying this burden in life. Thank you. And I'm thankful to my left arm, my right arm, to my hands. What great gifts my arms and hands are in my life for their strength and their skill, their dexterity. Thank you so much to my arms and hands for their great gift in my life. I'm thankful to my chest for the air, the life it brings into my body, and for my heart, pumping the blood around my body. Thank you so much to my chest. And thank you to my stomach for the nutrition and support it brings to my life, the strength. Thank you to my intestines. And thank you to my back my upper back, my middle back, my lower back. Thank you so much for the gift of support and strength, protecting the spine. And thank you to my pelvis and hips for the rigidity and strength and base that you give my whole body and torso. Thank you to my thighs for their power and strength and lifting and walking and moving around. A sincere thanks to my knees for bending and flexing. Great gratitude to my calf and shin for the spring in my step on this beautiful morning. Thanks to my heels, my ankles, my foot, my toes. And let's put my whole body together, my feet, my legs, the torso, the arms, the neck, the head. And let me just express great gratitude to this whole body and mind of mine. Thank you so much to this body and mind of mine. Thank you for this gift, support in my life. And just as I appreciate this body and mind of mine, I appreciate also the, all the people here in this room, all the beings in this room. Thank you so much to everybody in this room for coming together as a community of spiritual practitioners. And thanks to everybody in the surrounding neighborhood for the peace and tranquility of this morning. And to everybody in the whole city of Melbourne. Thank you to everybody in Melbourne. And thanks to everybody in Australia, the whole continent, this vast land. Thank you for the wealth and prosperity and the peace and the harmony that I'm experiencing this morning. And spreading it out further to everybody in, in Asia. We can just spread it up across Asia, Southeast Asia, spreading it out further to South Asia, East Asia, North Asia, spreading it all the way. And let's just go further east along with the, the sun. Let's just spread and express our gratitude to everybody in the Middle East, in Africa, in Europe, and thanks to everybody in North, Central, and South America. And maybe we can just step back from the whole planet and just thank the whole planet Earth for this support and life that it is supporting us, this gift from a distance, this pale blue dot, this planet Earth is a wonderful support to our life. And thanks to the solar system around us, the sun, for the heat and the moon, for the light at night. And this whole galaxy, the Milky Way that we exist in, and this whole universe and all beings in all directions. Some deep, heartfelt gratitude to all beings in all directions. Sometimes I like to imagine that I'm just lying on a lilo in a swimming pool, I'm very relaxed, or I'm just taking the place of the sun in the center of the solar system and I'm shining like light in all directions, a deep sense of gratitude to all beings in all directions, outwards and unbounded, freed from any hatred or ill will. 
my deep gratitude towards all beings in all directions, whatever living being they may be, whether they are weak or strong, great or the mighty, medium, short or small, my deep gratitude, thank you to all beings in all directions. Thank you so much to all beings in all directions. And thank you to me, thank you to you, thank you to all beings in all directions. North, south, east, west, above and below, all beings in all directions. Myself and others, all beings in all directions. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. I appreciate your wisdom, your kindness, your smiles, your generosity. I appreciate your trustworthiness, your good moral behavior, the safety I feel around you, the well-being I feel around you, the richness, the abundance, the peace, the calm, the tranquility, the knowledge, the wisdom, the skill, the playfulness, the creativeness, the beauty, the kindness. Thank you to all beings in all directions. So what does this feel like, this feeling of gratitude in my heart? What is its tone? What is its ambience? What is its uh, flavor? How would I describe this if it was a, a restaurant or a, a social venue? How would I describe this tone or venue or place to my friends, this place of gratitude? This mental state, this place in my heart, this experience. What is its flavor? What does this taste like? What does it smell like? What is the experience of gratitude? Does it feel happy or sad? Does it feel light or dark? Does it feel rough or smooth? Does it feel stiff and rigid? Or is it flexible and malleable, wieldy? How does gratitude feel? Is this calm and peaceful? Or is it agitating and annoying? How does this feeling of gratitude, what is the experience, what is it like, what is it to be grateful? This is an experience, this is a reality, it exists in our heart. What is it for me, what is my experience of this reality? So this has been a quick 15 minutes or so reflection on gratitude. Uh, in Buddhism we call this chagan, chaganusati, to reflect on gratitude or generosity. Or um, when I reflect on gratitude, I feel grateful. Or when I reflect, reflect on generosity, I feel grateful. My own generosity and the generosity of those around me. This is the experience of gratitude. Gratitude is something that exists in the heart. It's in the mind. It's not outside. It's not on a tree. It's not on the roads. It's something that we see. It's something in our mind. It's a mental state. It's a muscle. You can build it. You can develop it. So in Buddhism we talk about dana, sila, bhavana. The word bhavana means to cultivate. In the time of the Buddha, they would say, you bhavana cattle, 
you bow on our rice. You don't meditate cattle and you don't meditate rice. You cultivate them, you grow them. So in the 1800s, when they were translating Pali into English, this word to grow didn't resonate with them. There weren't too many hippies around at that time, so they looked into the Christian tradition and they found this word meditate. In the practice of Christianity, as I understand it, meditate means that you take a, a verse from the Bible or something and you dwell on it, you think about it. And to some degree that's true. We've been dwelling and thinking about gratitude today. But really this word is something bigger than gratitude, dwelling or contemplating. It's growing it. So I hope rather than dwelling and thinking about gratitude today, I'm hoping that you're experiencing gratitude and remembering concrete experiences in your life that you are genuinely grateful to rather than some inspiring verse about the benefits of generosity and the benefits and the theory of gratitude. I like to start with the practical. We've all experienced gratitude in our lives. We're all grateful at some level for something in our lives. We're thankful. When somebody is generous with us, we, we feel thankful. We feel thanks. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Appreciate that. Nice one. You know? Uh, we feel acknowledged, we feel worthy, we feel that this is a flourishing place to be in my heart. I feel flourishing, you know? Because we can, the opposite is scarcity, the opposite is impoverishment, the opposite is like not enough. And when we, when we experience not enough, sometimes I feel not enough. And the feeling of I am not enough is shame. I'm not worthy of receiving, I'm not worthy of support, I'm not, you know, it's, a, it's somehow against me. I didn't get left, let in in the traffic because that person doesn't like me. You know, it's, it can just move from something totally impersonal to a very personal kind of sort of judgment of ourselves when somebody is not generous with us or you know, generous in the just very sort of ordinary transaction that somebody wouldn't even bother to hold the door open for me. I can feel bad about that. And I can judge myself and I can feel shame. I can take it as a judgment. Whereas when I experience generosity and the wealth, the abundance of others, of being given a fair go, I feel good about myself. I can feel, yeah, this is a good life. This is a lucky country. This is, this is, where I want to be. This is home. But what's very, very interesting to me is that this is actually a muscle that I can grow and develop and strengthen. And I, I have to practice, just like I would brush my teeth or, or maybe do some exercise. This morning I went for a walk. It's my first time in Melbourne. It's my first time here at the BSV. I just went for a walk. Walk around, walk about, have a look just to experience this place and feel grateful. Feel grateful for the abundance, for the peacefulness, the tranquility, the order, as in not chaos and disorder, the calm, the peace of the environment, people out walking and running and there's a little golf course down the road and the train and the trams and the roads and the lights the abundance, the wealth, the prosperity of this place, the harmony, the peace, the tranquility. It's, it's cultivating a mindset. It's not something that I, 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 you know, I can have a negative mindset too, if I want to. I can have a real sense of scarcity, impoverishment, that I don't deserve to be here. Maybe they'll think I'm weird, you know. Uh, I, can, I can choose. I can choose what do I want to, how I want to be and lean into the person that I am. And this is very interesting that in Buddhism we have this very important word, bhavana, to cultivate, to grow. We can choose what we want to cultivate and grow in our life. And there's tools like Chaganusati, like this reflection on generosity. 
And the experience of reflecting on generosity or is, is gratitude, this cultivation of this mental state and this thing that exists in our heart, in our mind. It's somewhere in here, between our head and our feet. There's, there's this consciousness that exists in here somewhere. And we can grow this muscle. Just as I have a bicep, I have a mental state called gratitude. And I can, I can grow gratitude. And it's my choice. You know, somebody can throw me into a little prison cell, give me a floor to sleep on, and no other furnishing, but inside my heart, I can be growing gratitude. They can't take that away from me. And it's a freedom and a choice that I can choose to cultivate or grow. And it's the opposite to scarcity. It's the opposite to impoverishment. So that you can put me in the most impoverished place in the world, and I can be rich inside my heart. Or you conversely could put me in the most abundant rich place in the world, like here in Melbourne, and I can feel total scarcity for myself. Around me is peace, harmony, tranquility. No two houses are the same. I was really impressed by this today. My whole experience in Melbourne, not a single house is identical to the next house. You know, it's quite remarkable. I was just thinking of London. You can have, you can have a whole street of identical houses squeezed in, you know, built an exact regularity going, going back, you know, every decade, you know, you can see 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 1800s houses, all identical at, at times. Here in Melbourne, they're all different. It's very nice. Such abundance, such wealth. Or I can go around going, I don't have any of that. It's, I have nothing. I'm a monk. I don't even have money. I don't even have a what's it called, a Mickey card or whatever it is. Mikey, Mikey card, sorry. I don't have a Mikey. I can't, I'm looking at the tram, but I can't get on it, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, you know what I mean. It's, it's up to me to choose and grow what I want to grow. Do I want to grow anger or do I want to grow abundance? Do I want to grow gratitude or scarcity? And if I do, if I grow uh, one negative state, there's a whole gang of other negative states that will come with that. Like that impoverishment and scarcity is, is a close body of, of shame. And if I feel shame, then I'll feel a, a really strong uh, sense of, a negative sense of self. Like, like, like I really am a bad person or something, you know? It's just like a domino effect of I can fall into this sort of, you know, one negative state to another, to another, to another. Because they're all supportive of each other. They're like a gang. But I can also, on the converse, so actively cultivate and grow these, uh, I would call, positive or healthy states of mind, like gratitude. And when I have gratitude, I have, I have a, a, a good sense of, a, a good sense of self, a, a non-toxic sense of self, uh, where I'm not shameless, but on the other side, I'm not in this toxic sense of shame and judgment of myself, where I feel okay about myself that this talk is okay, that I'm okay, it's good enough, breakfast is okay, lunch will be good enough. You know, it's good enough. And today is a good day, the weather is good enough, this environment is good enough, I'm good enough, it's okay, you're all good enough. And that's really a, a more flourishing place to be. It's a useful place to be. Because I can have greater resilience you know, for instance, if, if I run into difficulty and I have practiced a sense of gratitude f for myself and towards the world, then my bounce back is much faster and better and stronger. You know, if, I have, if I'm in a car crash and the airbag deploys and the safe, safety belt works, and yeah, okay, maybe the car is totaled. You know, am I grateful that I'm alive? Am I grateful that I'm not injured? Or am I, you know, immediately panicking and worrying about the car and that great loss, you know? So that's a kind of a muscle I need to have developed so that it's, it's there just like the safety belt and the airbag. It deploys in that difficult time and situation where gratitude does come to mind. Well, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? And it has to launch just like an airbag instantly in that, you know, difficult situation. Because if I feel scarcity, if I feel loss, 
because that's the tendency. The natural tendency is that loss is more important than gain. I can, we can easily do an experiment with any of you that can show you that 50 bucks of loss is not the same as 50 bucks of gain. We can have a simple little betting competition of where, if in theory I gave every one of you $50 and I said, you can keep it, you know, just go down the street, have a latte, whatever you want, spend it the way you like, or let's, let's, let's gamble it. Let's see what kind of odds you would take. And for those of you who bet on the Melbourne Cup, you're not going to take a one-to-one. -one. You know what I mean? You're not going to take a, You're not going to put down 50 bucks at a bookie to get 50 bucks back if you win. You know I mean, it's like, no, that's stupid. Why? Because I'll lose. You know what I mean? There's, there's 10 horses running in the Melbourne Cup and I have to put down 50 bucks that maybe the winning horse will win and I get paid out 50 bucks. They're not going to do that. That's stupid, right? But to a professional gambler, supposing all 10 horses were identical in theory, right? Let's just say in theory, a professional gambler will tell you they will distinguish the difference between a possible win on 52 or 55 dollars payout. In other words, they'll take a win of three to five bucks. A professional gambler will tell you they know the risk. I, I don't mean a gambler in that sense. These are, this is a person who knows the risk. If there's a three to five dollar gain to be had, play it. That's how casinos win. They, they win on the, you know, a large number of, of plays because they're just playing on probability. It isn't a gamble for them. They are, the house always wins, as they say. Why? Because they know the risk. But to us, to the average punter, we hate losing. We will not lose. We will not lose. We hate losing. So normally we want something like two or three times the win. I will put down 50 bucks if I can win 100 to 150. And some people want 250. It's not that they're particularly greedy. They just are really, really afraid of losing. The opposite to being afraid of losing is maybe generosity. So we always talk about dana. Dana is being willing to acknowledge in my life that I have enough. So today when you, you bring a plate and you share it, you're taking a risk that maybe you won't even get one piece of the food that you got, that you brought. You know, unless you want to sit over your plate and, you know, s carve it out. I, you know, with all that effort to make that tray of samples, I'm going to make sure I get at least half of them that I brought, right? Stake it out. You know what I mean? Like, that's a kind of a, a scarcity. You know, if, if we come and we just put the ta plate on the table, maybe you come back and kind of go, oh, all the sambos are gone, but you know, there, there's these nice samosas or something else. I didn't think of it. I couldn't even, I wouldn't even know how to make it. I'll give that a go. You know, it's a kind of a banquet. You come to a Buddhist dana and it's a, it turns out to be usually a bit of a banquet. And, you know, it took, like the Buddha spoke about it in the past, but, you know, there was a whole Nobel Prize given on the benefits of generosity. You know, there was a Bangladesh man named Amrita Sena Sen. He proved that all famines were due not to climate change, and they're not due to a, f a failure, like in Ireland, of one crop, the potato. It's always a failure of distribution. Every famine is a failure of distribution. There is always enough. But do we share it around? Are we willing to give? And especially give in a time of difficulty. Because that's when we're really put to our test of scarcity. And often I don't have money anymore as a monk. But I have knowledge and I have experience and I have graft and I have sweat. You know, I've, I was, there's a, there's a thing here called the resident return visa. As a non, not born Australian, I, I've had the opportunity to fill in a resident return visa. And on question 29, it states, of what socioeconomic benefit am I to Australia? 
So I crowdsourced the answer to question 29 on, the so on this resident return visa. What, what socioeconomic benefit um, is this monk to Australian society? What, what is the answer, do you think? Hmm? Nothing? <laughs> I have to write down zero on my form, is that what I have to say? What's my socioeconomic value to the Australian economy, guys? Come on. You guys are good. You, you guys got all the answers. <laughs> I balance the budget. <laughs> what, you, you give and I take. Is that the balancing <laughs> act here, is it? Huh? Uh, in theory, zero, right? <coughs> to the, uh, the people who hold ledgers on, on money. That if it's all about money, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty low on the food chain of socioeconomic value in some ways, right? I, I, I have no family that I'm aware of. <laughs> no kids. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm pretty useless as far as, as question 29 goes in some ways if I view things as an economic transaction, in some ways. Right? I've been doing a lot of work around Newbury. I, I know my value up there, and I know how much offset against contractors. I've, I've hit at least $20,000 in the last two months. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, we've, we've been doing a lot, of, a lot of work up there for two months, and uh, I've got time and I've got sweat. So I'm, I'm, I've hit over 20,000 in donations to the BSV so far. Um, but no, this really comes down to my sense of abundance and scarcity. When I, when I, I actually asked this question at, at other groups, and uh, it, it really reflects, I'm very happy to hear people have some positive. Well, we've been teaching in Armadale, this place near our monastery in Perth, for about 30 years now. And I asked the same question, and, and everybody went, yeah, it's true, you are a bit of a bludger. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 25 or 30 years of teaching these guys, and they're like, yeah, it's true, you are kind of useless. And I'm like, thanks a lot, guys, you guys are great. <laughs> but if I value my, if I don't have that value for myself, if, if I have that negativity, yeah, it's true, I am useless. I am a bludger. But I don't feel that way about myself. And I do have to have a reality check. And one of the ways I reality check myself is, no, I've given. I've given in body, I've given in speech, I've given in mind, I've, I've done my dana, I've done my sila, and I am cultivating a good heart. And, and I'm leading in, and being an example to others, and you know, leading by doing, not just sitting here on the pulpit. You know? I, I, I've done the graft, too. You're all, you're all welcome to come out to Newbury and see what I've been doing. And it isn't just that I value that, but I need to take that transaction that I do you know, on a voluntary basis, and I need to value it myself. So we just heard about the committee and an announcement. If you're on the committee, or if you were on the committee, or if you're not on the committee, you've got to value all of your volunteer work wholeheartedly and you cannot let others own it and change it and sh take it down because the only way they can tear down what you're doing is if you allow them to if you don't value what you're doing it's it is like question 29 you are of zero economic you are a zero social economic unit in the world you do not get social economic units for what you do here in the BSV so you better value it for yourself and know its true value and the only way you can know that is if you reflect on it. And you can take it any day. Every day you are all doing at least three acts of kindness and of generosity in your life. You're looking after your kids, you're looking after your parents, you're looking after your neighbors, you were kind, you held open a door, you let people in in traffic. You did some acts of generosity in a day. But you need to think about that. You need to reflect on that. And we call that chaganusati. And you need to taste it, smell it, flavor it, and reflect on it. 
And remember that you can plan to give, you can give, that's just two times. But how many times can you reflect on that? Infinite. You can really cultivate and build this muscle of, I know what I did, I'm a witness to what I did. I, I own my own karma in this. And I'm grateful to it. Karma is this word that means like some sort of negativity. It's not negative. Karma is just doing. I did good stuff. I own that. That's my action. I did it. It's in my bag. Nobody can take that from me. You can put me in that little cell with nothing, but I still have it in here in my heart. I give. I will give. I am giving. A million times I can be in that little cell of nothing around me, impoverished, real f poverty, but in my heart it's just rich and abundant. And that's an option that I have. So if you want to be happy, give when you can afford to, what you can afford to. Don't give if you can't afford. That's called needs. I have needs. I can't give away my one robe. I've got one. Sorry. I'm not being stingy. It's a necessity. I have four requisites. I need food, I need clothing, I need shelter, and I need medicine. But beyond that, you know what? I'm kind of okay. You know, the car wasn't a Ferrari that brought me here to yesterday. It's okay, it was good enough. Four wheels, it moved. It was good, you know? I don't value myself because I'm not in a Bugatti or whatever it is. I don't value myself because my postal code is this and not that. I don't value myself because I am whatever, whatever, whatever. I value myself because I see myself as a worthy person, as somebody who has something to give. You know, I have nothing to give. On my little t question 27, the answer in theory from a government point of view is zero. You know, the government are a bit bigger than that. They know that we're valuable in different ways. So, who, who, you own that. We own that. I own that. I own how I think about myself. That's my business. I own that. And I need to value myself. And generosity and gratitude is one way I can do that. Do you think Bill Gates is a rich person? Yeah. yeah, but he's only wealthy because he's generous, not because he has a lot of money. You know, some of those other guys on that billionaire list are not wealthy people because they're not giving. They don't know how to give and they don't experience pleasure in their wealth. It's just digits in a bank account just digits in a bank account. You can be like me with no money and very happy and very wealthy. Very wealthy. I'm quite convinced that I experience higher levels of wealth than Bill Gates. Because it's an experience. It's right here in my heart. It's not a digit in a bank account. It's not a postcode. It's not what car you're driving in. It's a mental state right here in my heart. And here in this Buddhist teachings, we talk about cultivation. I can cultivate and grow that. And I'm not talking about becoming an egomaniac. Did anybody in this room in that 15 minutes flip into an egomaniac? Did you get a big ego buzz out of, yeah, I'm a really superior being? Did you have your thing popped up that it was, you went into ego overdrive? There's a, quite a number of people in the room. That's a decent statistical set, as we would say in science. But yet, yeah, none of us will, will all grow up, oh, you know, you've got to be humble. You've got to be humble. Did anybody feel not humble, or whatever you want to call it, egotistical, in this little practice of gratitude? Try it out, guys. This ain't dangerous. You know, you can do it at home, in the safety of your own house, in case, you know, you, in, you step on other people's toes get people and bag you off as being a tall poppy. Oh, that person's really full of it, aren't they? You know? No, they're just, just feeling good about yourself. And I, I'd like to think that that will be you being your better self and that you're growing this better self. You know? And this is something really important. This is Chaganusati today. Okay, if you have any questions, we have a short amount of time. Um,
you know, one of the, um, the Catholic priests uh, similarly put you down to the Section 29. Uh, I, I don't know what Section 29. They, they don't have any social economic, I mean, they don't produce economic value, do they? I, I don't really know. I, I can't really comment on, on the Christian church. and you know I know in Ireland they, they're, they have a salary these days. And they pay, I don't know if they even pay taxes on their salary. I, I don't know what the situation is here. You know what I mean? Don't they take vows of poverty as well? I, uh, uh, you know, we have to distinguish between poverty and scarcity. So today I've been trying to make that distinguishment that financially I, I am poverty, I am the epitome of poverty, but I don't experience scarcity. And, and one can have a you know, gazillion in dollars, but you can have tremendous scarcity. Scarcity is a mental state in your heart. Poverty, the real meaning of the word poverty is a mental state of I, I, this isn't enough, I haven't got enough, this isn't good enough. And it's very related to shame and status and other things like that. So we've been talking about the opposite of that today. And, you know, there's all kinds of religions and religious practitioners in the world. And you got to, I always try to treat people on an individual basis. Because I've met, you know, one of the meanings of the word Christian, there's, there's three meanings. It's a religion. Uh, to be Christian is, is to be narrow-minded if you look up the dictionary, and there's a third meaning of Christian is to be generous. Mm -hmm. To be Christian about something means to be generous, actually. So that's, you have to be a good Christian to be generous mm -hmm. is actually one of its meanings, mm -hmm. you know. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a data, a data point of one, maybe, and some. You know what I mean? Like just. <clears throat> Modest, yeah. Um, he didn't have the wealth. Yeah. The inner wealth. But, yeah. Um, a lot of wealth <coughs> practitioners. But so, so, so that's, that's from my personal circumstances. So, but it does, for me, highlight the difference of um, cultivation. Well, that's, you know, uh, what we've been talking about for those of, at the back of the room maybe not have heard about it is, is just we've been saying that, um, is it, are, are you Cora? Yeah. Cora's been talking about her dad was a priest and he used to earn a salary and he didn't, maybe he didn't have the tools of reflection. And, you know, so I would challenge all of, all of you who may consider yourself born Buddhists and part of the superior club in some ways to really look into your own teaching to really take out of Buddhism the tools, out of the toolbox, and apply them in your life. Give them a, give them a go, and just, just see how they stand up, whether they, they work for you or don't work for you. Like, I can encourage you to maybe reflect on generosity or on gratitude, on the things that you've given or received in your life, but you've got to do it. And you can do it at a traffic light, you can do it while waiting on a phone, uh, like, I'm grateful to be on hold for 40 minutes waiting for Telstra um, because it gives me 40 minutes for me to pretend that I'm doing something when I can, in fact, reflect on gratitude. <laughs> As opposed to, I want to strangle this person in India who hasn't <laughs> answered my call. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if it's true. <laughs> it's a joke. <clears throat> yeah, well, you're proud. Yeah.
So, so the, if, if let me just uh, repeat the question back to some degree: is 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 gratitude an action, or is it a is it a verb, or is it an experience? So, I would say that gratitude is all of those things. But uh, it, it, there's three times, if you like, to gratitude. I will do something. I am doing something of generosity, and I reflect on what I have done. And, and these, the first two is just, in a sense, just one thought. You know, I, I will give and I am giving, but the reflection you can do infinitely. And there is a skill to it of where it doesn't become an egomania, or you don't over-hype yourself to some degree, which, which is we're all terrorized from every culture, whether you come from a Christian guilt background or from a, a Buddhist culture, it doesn't matter. We, we, we all are warned, don't get a big ego. But I, I, would, I would sort of encourage us all as adults now to explore the possibilities of, of reflecting on gratitude. And, and I think the more you practice it, the more you will see that it is an action. You have to do things. Like, I, I'm always fed up with people, oh, I'm a generous person. Uh, oh, really? What did you do? And they don't, they, haven't, they don't actually have a lot of generosity in the bag. So you actually need to do generous things. You need to, you need to share your wealth. Or else it's just hollow speech. And there's a lot of people who stand on the pulpit of, like, I'm a generous person, and they haven't done it when you look into the bank account. You know? Donald Trump, his foundation, he, it was no, there was no money going out. You know, he was buying paintings for himself, of himself. Something like that. I, I don't mean to bag off Donald. I'm just giving it as an example. It's amazing how narcissistic some people are around, around generosity. Bill Gates does it, you know. He is working hard to offload whatever it is, three to six billion per annum, and it's hard work. And if you, whoever try to give, you will find that it is harder. You will discover what Kellogg's, you know, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, the Kellogg's Foundation guy, he said it was easier to make money than to give it away. And it is. I assure you, it is harder to give away money than to make it. Yes. Because you will find that it will just go boom. You know, you will not go to where you... It is so hard to deliver money, and it's so hard to find people worthy of receiving the money and who will use it well and skillfully and all that other stuff. You know? I sweat every day to make sure that any donations that are given are spent well. It's hard. It's easier if you give a question, and okay. uh, you know, because then it's like it goes somewhere. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, can I ask you a question? Would you have wished it otherwise? Are you grateful that you knew your wife and you knew your daughter, even though they're now dead? I think so. I just buried my dad uh, just in January, and I buried my brother a few years ago too. And to the degree that I love them is the degree I've suffered from knowing them. And it, the two come together. And I'm grateful that I knew both of those people, even if it was very painful for me to bury them too. And And gratitude, I mean, like I was with my dad in January when he passed away. And he took a fear I had of death in that moment. And I'm so grateful to that. I, I you know, I was with my brother and my sister at his passing and, you know, he was on the machine, you know, he was in the hospital and <clears throat> I felt joy in his passing, and it wasn't because of his passing, it was just, he was taking with me a great fear I had of death. 
and I that's how I I think it's 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 a muscle that I had built and built and built and built and I I was with my brother and sister and they didn't have that tool um, to take that difficulty and to transform it into something because you know the, the difficulty is coming and you can go into the dark side or the bright side of it and for me it was just it was uh, it, you know not boasting it's just this muscle I've had around gratitude because I work all the time in in a, like a voluntary c capability, and it's so hard work. When I mentioned, heard about the committee and stuff, it's so hard work. But the greatest joys we can have in life are through our social engagement, through our relationships, and if we're not willing to be out there and, and, and connect with others and have family and have friendships, and you know, if we, if we think that by, I can protect myself by being you know, bulletproof and, and having no relationship with the world, because that'll save me from this suffering. It's not, it's not living a life. And when I feel sad, when I feel hurt, when I feel lost, it's, I, often I'm tracing it back to because I loved, because I loved them, because they were meaningful in my life, and I'm grateful to that, and I'm willing to carry that burden that comes with life. You know, because it was worth it. There isn't, there is, it's the pain that comes with the gain. And, and that's the problem in life. The, in every wonder, in in every good transaction, there is this dark side to it too. And but I'm grateful. Thank you. Gratitude is a really powerful way of. Of dealing with life, difficulty, especially the difficulties. And otherwise we'll feel angry, you know. We'll feel loss and not the gain that is <coughs> so worthwhile. Uh, it's 25 to, uh, I don't know the schedule. You guys need to tell me what's going on. Yeah. Mm. What is skillful giving? Well, my first advice is, is give and just practice it and like cultivate and develop for, for I, like I, I cultivate and develop what I like to give and what I can give and what I have in abundance. Unskillful giving, toxic giving is where I don't have it to give. You know, and I see that at times where people give and they can't afford it or, you know, they don't have the, the, the wealth to give. So, for instance, you ask somebody, can, can you help me with this? And they say, yeah, but they actually don't have the time. So they have scarcity of time. They don't have abundance and wealth of time. And so they end up fudging and being very passive aggressive around, oh, I, you know, they, you know what I mean? It gets this game. So that isn't giving in, from wealth. You can only give from wealth. So you have to have a clear, a clear vision of what it is I have and what is enough before I can really give. Now, that's not, I'm not asking you to be really calculated in your giving, but I, I, I'm talking about this emotional experience that I, I have this, I can give this. So when people ask me, can you do this, Bante? I've got to really think, hang on a second, um, can I do this? You know, uh, you know, c can I get there? Uh, you know, do, do I have to ask somebody a favor to transport me there? And you know, where am I going to stay? And where am I going to get food? Or whatever it is, you know, because you know, sometimes like, you know, recently I was in Ireland, and people all want to hear about meditation, but where are they going to buy my bus ticket? Where are they going to? Who is going to help me get there? Because their assumption was that, uh, you know you know, they wanted me to give all this stuff, but not support at all, like in a, in a way. So I couldn't give what I didn't have, if you know what I mean, all right? So this is, this, it sounds really basic, but this is really important. This is to do with skillful giving. Skillful giving is I cognize what I have in abundance that I can share that would be skillful for that person. Again, sometimes, like a lot of time, beggars look at me and say, can you, can you give us some money? And they're not beggars, they're, they're drug addicts usually, all right? And 
I, A, I don't have money. And so sometimes I, I, it's not that I, I don't say to them no. I said, well, what can I give you that would be helpful to you? You know, and then, you know, if, if it's a drug addict who's, who's looking for a high, I can't help them with that. I can't help them with that. But, you know, maybe I have some food, and if that's appropriate or skillful for them, that's okay. You know, okay, maybe I can share this with you, you know. So, so that's just a quick thought on, on being skillful. And, and when you give, try to just reflect on what was in it, because we can, we can go back and retwist the whole story. I was a mug, I was a sap, I was an idiot. Or I gave with a pure heart, even if it turned out that that, the recipient wasn't pure in their mind. You know what I mean? So I need to often distinguish as well, you know, that, that, you know, that, that I don't, that I gave out a good heart and, and I need to focus on that. I own that rather than, you know, getting into a negative accounting later on that, oh, that, that, that person wasted things. Like, as I said, for any of you who try to give, it's hard, hard work. And you, you can feel a lot of resentment for the time and effort and money and resources that you put into things. Or you can just see that this was a pure transaction in my heart and what they did with it is their bloody karma. You know, and just, that's it, you know. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. But, but wisdom is this word we banter around in Buddhism a lot. But wisdom, wisdom is often knowing, it, knowing things the way they really are. And when you give, sometimes the person who's receiving is going to do something foolish with that. And that's when it's really hard giving. But it can be still the right thing to do. You know? And, and, and if you look and study people who are generous, like you, you look at Gates and all these guys, they, they have to have a tremendous muscle. Uh... You know, are, are they putting on bets, like they're trying to come up with some vaccine for something? Like I remember Gates was talking about how he's, they spent 60 million on, on something that was really a waste of time in the end. You know, but it was kind of, like, that's why I'm encouraging you. When you give, you will go down so many blind alleys. You will go down uh, a lot of dark alleys of, in, in generosity. But that's when it really is giving in a certain sense. And what I get out of it at the end of the day is that I learned how to give. And I learned how to distinguish people who are worthy of receiving it or not. I learned how to, how to work with people who are good at utilizing my time, resources, and wealth, and others where it wasn't healthy. You know? like w one of the reasons recently that I left Ireland was is that it was just unhealthy. People were not willing to give. There wasn't a sense of dana there. They want to know about bhavana. They want to know about meditation, but they weren't actually willing to support monks in Ireland at, at this time in Ireland. There's a scarcity around that. There's a very deep anger towards, particularly towards the, the church, meaning Christian church, because Ireland's a very Christian area. And it's kind of transferred into Buddhism as well. Like anybody who's religious is obviously a blodger and a negative and blah, 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 blah. So my question today about question 27 on the it's resonant neutron is a profound question. If you guys don't see us as value, if you don't value what we're saying, and the reason you won't value it is because you don't apply it in your life and take it as a tool and put it into use and you know it's utility true it's you know the, the real value or you know praise for this teaching today will be I found this useful and I applied it in my life and this is where it helped me not that I was a persuasive speaker or something else that's just flattery you will flatter me by your utility of what I've taught you today and you will only know its value by using it and doing it in your life that's all so try gratitude, try it out, especially when you're on a hold, a traffic jam, waiting for a lift, somebody's ticking you off. What am I grateful for now? Or maybe dealing with a death. What am I grateful for in this situation? Thanks to my father, I, I, he's taken a real sting of fear of death from me. I'm so grateful. That was his gift to me in his dying moment. That he passed peacefully. And he peaceful, and he just powered down, and I had the privilege to be there with him. And okay, sadu, sadu, sadu. 
So just very briefly, let, let's just quickly reflect. We've been receiving this Dhammadana, a generosity of thought, and I just want you to imagine that you're receiving it like a gift, like you've received a beautiful gift. And maybe I'd just like you to imagine that you look around and say, who can I share this abundance that I've received today? And I, I can share it with my family, with my friends here, or I can share it with my family and friends if they're overseas. And I can also just share it out further and further to people who are near and dear to me, people I treasure in other lives. Or I can just share it with anybody who would like to receive this wealth and abundance that I've received and shared today. And this is our sharing of merits. So sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.